Good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome to this MA session. Uh, well, it's a little bit late. Uh, so, I don't exactly know what you would really expect of this session, but we are all here for you. Any question would be very welcome. Uh, I don't know if any one of you want to start. Could be related to the past year, could be related to this communication plan or the new logo or uh, discussion about the future, our relationship with Odoo. Maybe some remark regarding Pedro's talk of uh, yesterday. Yeah. I'm giving some ideas to you. Huh? <laughs> Pick up one. <laughs> Feedback about the event? Maybe we start with the, oh, there is one in the end. We, we get two mic? Yeah, good. Yeah, I jump at the back. Give you the best smile, you, you're recorded. Hi there, uh, name's John. Um, I don't want to be a troublemaker, I'm new here, all right? <laughs> Every question um, is welcome, <laughs> no worries. So, uh, what does the OCA want to become and what does it need from the community of developers and companies who are part of the association in terms of engagement? What does it need from the going forward? So what do you want to be and how can we help? There you go. For who is this one? <laughs> For you. <laughs> For me? <laughs> All right. Um, so I think the communication uh, plan with this uh, Make or Do My Job Together is really the tagline uh, that will probably uh, carry on our decision over the, the next years. So the goal will really be to continue to provide Odoo with the best subsets of module to deliver Odoo faster and than others, I would be, I would mean. So by others, I mean the person that want to do this all alone or all using specific code for the customer. I think there is really a layer here in between that uh, if we really work better together, we can have a competitive advantage uh, against Odoo itself, because now it starts sometimes to be a problem, but overall against other competitors. Um, and the one that plays the OCA game will probably win on the long run. At least it has been true for camp to camp I think it has been true for many other companies that are involved in this OCA. And I am hoping that in the future uh, we will grow the number of uh, invested integrators in this association to to continue the journey like this. Any other opinion so on that? To, to your specific question, I think one of the critical things of any open source community is that as a board, we don't dictate to you about what it is that you do. And um, I'm off screen. Um, and so a lot of it's about freedom to choose, right? And so right now we're a very focused community around excellence and I guess in the modules that we produce and the development, but we're always looking for new opportunities to add different layers to that around functional contributors, around um, joint marketing, around a whole bunch of different things that we can do. Uh, one of the things we would love to see more of is, is more events, certainly now that we can have them again. Um, but yeah, the, the, the main thing is that, you, you know, this is open source, right? Everybody's free to choose what it is that they want to do, and where it is that they want to contribute, and, and what itch it is that they want to scratch. Does it answer the question? Um, Not entirely. Yeah, probably, the, probably there's no. some, some small thing to add. Um, I think that we need ev everybody and everything. So we, we not only need sponsors for the OCA to continue to do events like this, but also contributors to all kinds of stuff like open upgrade, like a diverse set of modules that we maintain, and even more functional people around and uh, what we probably need to still find is this, uh, is a way um, how we can uh, engage more functional people in designing, um, reviewing architecture, re reviewing designs and doing uh, such stuff. So we would like to be really, uh, at least that's my perspective, really immersive on, on, on the variety of skills um, uh, inside the OCA. If I will express a personal wish, I think I will say that the OCA will be a kind of quality certification label 
that people involved in this community can deliver better quality faster than any other integrators. That would be my wish one day. We're getting there, <laughs> by the way. Other questions? You're all so quiet. Mm -hmm. Quick summary of, of previous year, you mean? Of okay. We're done, yeah. yeah um, I think the previous year was mainly uh, about this communication plan. It, uh, I don't know how it looks like from the outside. <laughs> from the inside, it's quite a lot of job, actually, uh, to rethink all the messages and go to all those thinking. You have been asked through some survey and some asking in the mailing list of your opinion, but I mean, behind the scenery, it was really a big thinking among all the board members to rethink this uh, communication plan. I think that was our biggest focus that year. I don't know if I have anything yeah. missed that's worth it. I, I, th I think that actually um, the work that Stefan's done along with Alexandra on the, um, the run boat, the run that's a massive effort that's hugely reduced our costs um, and our efficiencies. Come closer. <laughs> oh. and, um, and, and so, yeah, so certainly on, on the technical side, the run boat side, um, quite a lot on the people that work around some of the automation tools, such as the, the GitHub bot and a lot of the automation that we have to reduce a lot of the work that happens. The website. The, the website, the new open upgrade framework, which of course wasn't the board, but it was the open upgrade maintainers. So there's been a lot going on this year. And even... The organisation of an event like this that we haven't had to do for three years, 50% bigger than ever, um, new location. Um, it's been a really, really busy year. Money. <laughs> Contributors. I, as a treasurer, I do agree. <laughs> So, oh yeah. So the question was, what's the um, main, main restriction on um, on the for the growth of the ODU community and the OCA? I think one of the important messages to to, to share is that we we now uh, are for the first time in the history of the OCA, if I can trust the figures, we are somewhat at at the verge of being like reliable reliably income based. So before, and it was like uh, always up and down, we couldn't project, we couldn't do r real budgets, and we're still not there that we could make a solid budget ahead uh, with, a limited, with a limited sponsorship, donations and members. But if I, uh, as a treasurer of the OCA, can, can share a wish, it would be that everybody that is engaged with the community from everywhere in the world considers to become a member, at least the people that are, that are uh, buying in from online or attending the meeting should become a member and please convince your CEOs, your bosses uh, to consider a sponsorship of the OCA because that allows us to make the events like this and, and I personally would like the OCA to be the, the counterbalance of whatever Odo is trying to do in its strategy. We should be able to at least balance this from an open source perspective, sharing all, all our beliefs. It's my opinion, but I think also what is blocking the, grow, the growing of OCA is that we don't have a clear message about the value of OCA for different profiles. And we've been working on that with the communication plan and, we'll still, and we still have other ideas to go on with that. And it's really my personal opinion, but I don't think we have really a strong statement about what we are and what we want to offer. And because we are not a union of integrators. We have a mix of Odu community, Odu enterprise. We have a mix of uh, open source, uh, how do you say that, really believers, and others that are more uh, about business, and we have to make it all work. And I think that's something we need to, to clarify in the following years. But it's my personal opinion. It's okay. <laughs> you agree? You agree? You're free to <laughs> okay. <laughs> One thing uh, that's maybe more related to the contribution process and that is very specific in OCA um, is 
a little bit of lack of steering or functional or technical steering in various modules. That's a typical resource that we lack because uh, most contributors contribute in the context of their customer projects, which is good, but then uh, projects end, we focus our attention on something else, and then we are not available anymore to review pull requests that come to things we have contributed. And I, my teams, we, we are a bit guilty about that too, because it's, it's difficult to set up. So I think personally that in general we need more people that take a steering role on a few sets of module to, to, to give guidance. Because it happens that you contribute a module and then when you look at it two versions later it has become something quite different than what you intended. Which may be good or not. And I think it's a specific problem that we have in OCA compared to other open source communities where generally on a project there is a particular steering team who give a guideline on how the project should evolve. And for that we need more functional contributors but also people who really invest a little bit of their time to say okay I'm interested in that module and I'm going to follow it over the years, at least over a few years, to give some steering and then to give more consistency over time on uh, the way things evolve. That's personal opinion. <laughs> we, we have a question from um, a YouTube chat. So Hong Tran is asking, same, same questions as last year. I totally agree that OCA bring great value, but there is lack of responsiveness on the repositories and multiple PRs being left open. What's your take on that? Contributors sometimes just open PR and leave it open for years without communication. I think that, that, connects, that yes. connects with what I just uh, said and that's, that's a bit of a structural problem. Uh, but that's not something that the board can, can resolve with uh, any kind of process. Is that something that the community needs to be aware of uh, and, and need to, to also learn to think long term with, uh, with their contribution and learn to, to think how to, to integrate their OCA work not only in their project work, but also a bit on a, on a longer term. And I'm fully aware that it's not possible to fully track your contributions, all your contributions over a year, but thinking about who is going to take the role of steering uh, for, for each module, I think it's important. And we have, the concept is there, the tooling is there, there is this maintainer role. You can declare yourself as maintainers on, on add-ons. You will get specific notifications when, when the add-ons on which you are maintainers uh, receive pull requests. So the mechanics is there, but we, we need yeah, more involvement of this kind of profile. But I think uh, the main problem is a misconception also about the concept of what is contributing. And contributing is also reviewing the PRs. So it's not only I speed the code on OCA and I have to, um, to have the right to demand the reviewer. No, review first uh, two or three PRs and then you will be on the position to demand this. So uh, it's not a particular claim to anybody, uh, to anyone, but take that also into account when you are uh, when you are asking uh, that you, are, uh, you don't have any, any review. And uh, for the communication part, let me contribute uh, a, a term that I use that is the selfish solidarity. Uh, solidarity. I call it that way because you are being solidarious, but selfishly because, uh, because at the end, if you plan resources through all the year, you will be benefit that on your project is already, your effort has been already prorated and on the, um, on the road, you have learned a lot. You, you are able 
to um, to plan better your your budget and your project because you are on the wave and you already know uh, how OCA has been during this time. So. I, uh, this is something to uh, uh, as a reflection uh, that you can have about why uh, uh, to contribute and to contribute not punctually but on a regular basis. Well, um, from my point of view, this is part of the communication. I mean, when when we say we miss the proper communication of our value, it's not just about the moral value or stuff like that. It's also the value that. Graham was talking about today for open upgrade. So if you stay on the same page for a long term, you are you get learning, you get out training, and you know that you can plan uh, something for your project. You know how to estimate better. You learn a lot of things, and that's probably the, the most important value that you get. And if you do reviews, you get a lot of learning out of the box without uh, investing in technical courses or stuff like that. You also know if a module that you're using is going to be broken in the next release so you can prevent that. So it's also for you know <laughs> making sure that uh, you don't have any trouble with your production uh, projects as well. So value is everywhere from my point of view. There's, there's also another like question. Let's take one here first. With the mic. <laughs> um, this is a, a problem really in every free software project uh, and it needs to be addressed uh, differently for every project. Uh, but it's the involvement of non-technical people. Uh, there are a lot of functionals or analysts here today uh, at the OCA days, um, but I do not see them frequently in interacting in the OCA uh, the rest of the year. Um, does the board have any plans or strategies or thoughts on involving non-technical people? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, first, maybe we need all a bit more understanding of each other and placing a bit the context. So maybe the association is there for many years, but as Frederick pointed out, it's very recent. Sorry, you're here now. <laughs> so it's very recent that we actually are financially self-funded in a healthy manner. And I think it's always a matter of priority in life, so first you want to survive. <laughs> it may be stupid, but I mean, this is what we were fighting on all those years along, right? And all of us are not paid for the job we do, it's all based on self-investment or personal investment for most of, the, of us. And the first uh, part of the pyramid is really to be sustainable. And I think that is now achieved. For us, the next uh, step was we need to tell the world what we do. And that's why we invested in this communication project, because if you don't know what we do, then we will not attract any more, more people, right? So uh, first step first. And then for, for us, we always claimed we wanted more functional. And I think it is at the edge of changing. I've seen some, um, some directors joining this, uh, this event. I've seen so, some functional, maybe it has been because it has not uh, happened since three years, but still I think it's the very first time that in a so-called cold sprint, we have now a, a reasonable share of people that are non-technical people. And some of the talk we had reflected this as well. And I found some of your talk guys were really very interested for another public than only techies. And for us it's a bit new, so I don't think we have we have ideas, but we have not discussed ex exactly any plan. Now we, we are very happy to see that, and I agree we need to find a way to make interest of that, and I think the interesting uh, talk we had is one of it. Uh, there is a couple of ideas that we already discussed on how to, um, to make this even better for the next event. Uh, sharing ideas, we discussed with some people about how about some tables to people expose the problem, and some experts could actually think how to solve it, so some really exchange of knowledge on concrete cases, for giving one example of it, but we have many other, other ideas on the, on the table for discussion. Anyone want to add something on this? So I think in the near term, and this isn't a board thing, this is more a personal opinion, but for functional people, they're about to become really, really critical to what we do. And part of the reason for that, we've got over 4,000 modules now that are largely a 
some are tightly coupled like WMS, you know, but then we've got other modules that have got loose things. And it's about functional people, how they tie those modules together to create solutions and a less, I suppose, developer-centric interface of how to operate those modules together. So part of that's documentation, perhaps. Part of that is just sharing. But I actually think a big part of that is just people saying to say, if you bundle these modules together, right, and you have a nice config screen and you have a nice way of wrapping it up to reach a wider audience, that that then starts to really uncover and expose the value of all of that technical work, but through a functional lens, if that makes sense. Speak loud. They will be addressed as so much more functionality for the game uh, compared to the last two years. And I think one of the main reasons. Maybe Virginie is there, just, just, just <laughs> saying that is a great thing. So maybe one of the first steps would be to have more functional people in the board. Uh, it feels like the representativity of, the, of Virginie among the techies among you is the same as in the bigger room. So maybe that could be one of the first steps. Just Instead of just saying, come, just actually invite them in the board. And I think that's, that will be reflected in the rest of the community and topics and everything. So the question was, how do we vote out the existing board members? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I see this one is for me. Yeah? Uh, look, so I repeat, um, a few years ago, so I made a call also to renew the board because uh, there's some old timer here that might be tired at a point with all the energy they place over years for this association. And we had some brave people that were keen to join us the, and I very much appreciate it. And of course, it's not over. So uh, the General Assembly will take place or take place Yeah, so maybe with the mic is better. Oh, sorry. So the AGA has started. That's how we elect the new delegates and the new board members. So the email went out this week. Um, I can also put it on the website. Um, you've got two weeks. If you are a paid member, you can apply to become a delegate. And from the delegates, which is about 60 to 70, then you can apply to become a board member. So if you're interested in becoming a board member, that's the way to go forward if you would a functional person who would like more functional people on the board that's the way to do it but it's happening now so if you're interested it's now make it happen there's too many men in the board i'd like to add two <laughs> i'd like to add two more things uh, one is for uh, the question before regarding what are we going to do for attracting uh, other kind of actors. Uh, we discussed several times that the communication strategy will have um, different targets. So developers, of course, but the most important targets will be functionals and decision makers, being a PM or CTOs or CEO, whatever. And regarding, mm, well, adopting new board members' profiles, last year we had probably 10 proposals out of nine positions. So the, the truth is we don't have enough people candidating themselves. Even if we have a lot of delegates, I think. Uh, I don't know how many, but yeah. We have quite a good number of delegates, so just step up and <laughs> ring our doorbell and, <laughs> and get votes. So that's the way. Yeah, and just to share my, my uh, personal experience, uh, before joining the board, I talked with uh, Stefan, I talked with Maxime, also to ask what is going on the, on the board, what do you talk about, uh, will it be okay for me because I, I'm not techie, I won't understand a thing. And so they, they told me a, a little bit of it. And so I can do the same for new, for maybe new uh, board members, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> for new candidates, I can also answer those kind of questions, I'm available for that. And so I can reassure you, it's nice to go and to be in the board. <laughs> 
And then if I may have a suggestion to include more functional people, it can start also with technical people because when you, you work with functional people on a daily basis and maybe they help you write specifications for modules that you are going to contribute to CA. So maybe in your internal process you could encourage your functional people to write their specification in a GitHub issue. Why not and discuss it uh, before contributing and then uh, encourage them to test on run both instead of testing on your internal development system and then give their feedback on the pull request. I don't know if some of you do that in your daily process, but that's also a way to help bring functional people. You can also train them to, to use a little bit of GitHub. It's not more difficult than using your internal issue tracking system. So that could be a possibility. <laughs> Easier than confidence. Probably more easy even, right? Yeah, but it doesn't come naturally. I know from experience that we need to <laughs> to be, yeah, to explain. To yeah, right. But open question, maybe the tooling is not the correct for the functional people, GitHub, maybe there should be another tool for functional people. Yeah. Ask maybe. Or maybe not, I don't think GitHub is more difficult than Jira or Redmine or whatever. Right so. <laughs> Genuinely, I don't know what is the problem to, um, to contribute with RFC and blueprints, uh, maybe it's the tool, and we need another platform for that. Or maybe don't people still don't know that's a way we could contribute, because you're talking about, I'm not sure we have a document explaining it. Maybe we do, maybe it's hidden somewhere, it's not clear for everyone. So what Pedro is saying, that an, a way to contribute with functional contributions, it's to, before even proposing a module, is proposing a RFC request for comments like, I'm thinking on building X, and this is what I think it should do. Uh, any other opinions there? Is this right? Are there ideas? Should we go ahead? Should we change something? So start a discussion, proposing a design before building the module, and then the, so the process doesn't start when the model is coded and it's proposed. The, the process can start when we are still designing the module. And there's this, the functional domain. So those are the people designing what needs to be built. It's not the coder, the developer yet. Uh, so that's kind of a process that it's possible to do. I've done it for several times, other people do it, but maybe it's not, I don't, it's not a popular for sure. It's, it's, you don't see it frequently. So maybe something more needs to be done for this to happen more frequently. Luis <clears throat> is pointing to something interesting. Say yeah. Um, as there are so many, so so little uh, reps of on OCI that has the discussion tab active. Uh, in Brazilian localization, we don't have a agreement to achieve it, and uh, I uh, I really want because uh, the discussion can um, able people to ask simple questions and start to contribute. But uh, if we uh, can't uh, create this opening, uh, it's very, very difficult to the new guys. Come on. Uh, to enable the discussions on the There's a future. That's a new feature, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know exactly how to answer that. I think it's, a f it's more a fact than a, than a question, actually. Um, I think it's a suggestion. To, yeah. I was going to say, I think it's, it's a suggestion, just enabling a future on, on, on the repos for the discussion. Uh, I personally wasn't aware if that was uh, relevant or not. So back in a few years back, we got the opposite feedback. We were told, we, you have too many channels, we are lost, we don't know where to go, right? So because there were dozens of mailing lists, phantom mailing lists nobody used, there's a contributor's mailing list and there's Discord and there's uh, tons of, of channels to communicate. Oh, yeah. But, but, yeah, just, just on that. go ahead. <clears throat> so about two months ago I deleted 78 mailing lists. Nobody noticed. Nobody raised a single <laughs> question about it, right? So, oh, one, one person noticed. Who? Yeah, because they just weren't used. So we just collapsed it into two. And I, I think it's been a lot easier as well from there. So that's part of the problem is that we had so many channels. We had 80-odd mailing lists. We had um, all sorts of things going on. 
Um, so yeah, we constantly need to look at our tooling, but also when it comes to projects specific tooling like enabling GitHub discussions or things like that. Certainly, I mean, the board can say this is a good idea, but that generally sits with the project steering committees and it's not up to us to sort of stand on their toes so much. Yeah. Tangentially related is the question that we, we try to fight a little bit against huge repositories with uh, many, many modules. And so there is a tendency to go to more manageable repos, but the problem is that GitHub discussions is linked to one one repo. So that would have the effect of uh, you know, splitting some discussion across repositories and maybe f making them harder to find. I don't know, but there might be a discussion to be had about uh, this, this channel. Uh, that can be discussions or, or we could, have each PSC uh, have a way to advertise their preferred communication channel, whether it be Discord or a discussion tab on their repo. For localization, for instance, it can make total sense to have the, the discussion enabled. For the stock logistics repos, if we have 10 repos or more uh, dedicated to that, does it make sense to, to have 10 discussion channels So there's a suggestion here to link uh, the discussion of GitHub with the Odoo discussion to get a better ranking. That's what you propose? Okay. Question? I mean, uh, uh, the discussions in the repository is probably not a good idea because of different discussions uh, in different repositories. Uh, since we're using Discord, they also have this uh, feature now that you can have discussions inside uh, that, that behaves like a, like a discussion board, like a, a discourse, for example. Or, of course, something like discourse is, uh, is a good solution too. So that you just have one thing, and if you need to divide topics, uh, you can then use tools for that, or tags, flex. Uh, not 20 tools in 20 places, because that's, that will just uh, result in nobody finds anything, and you don't get response because you asked just in a wrong channel. Yeah, it's a very good, uh, very good point. I have just a small concern from the Trevor perspective, and that's <laughs> the experience we have with Travis. As soon as we uh, put our stakes on, on a service that might be for profit, uh, at some point we, 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 we got to we're going to have to pay for that. So well, what's, I think what's summarized here is uh, our own external communication was of this uh, plan for that year to set it up. Uh, I hear from you that there is also a need for how do we properly communicate and integrate maybe more functional people in uh, a more streamlined channels. So we heard, we, we've heard you. And I think we, we have to work a little bit on this to provide some guidance. I like the approach not to use a one thread for every repo. I don't think it's constructive. I think a uh, last question uh, in the end. <laughs> We've seen some great improvement on the run boat and uh, on the migration tooling and everything. Uh, and we, uh, I think we all use, most of us use it and most of, it, most of us want to see it improve faster. So do we want to, that the OCA funds some of that development or um, some of that development or do we want to actually have some other additional materialization fees for those, those who actually want to contribute money instead of or, uh, instead of our uh, above, above the time you already invest in it. Is it clear? Or? I'm not sure, sorry. Do we want to fund the runboat development or do we want to fund the runboat uh, the migration scripts and migra open, open upgrade, open upgrade uh, scripts uh, that we have? Or do we want to just leave it to, to the people who have time to do it? Well, uh, so Currently, most of the funds we get from the membership fees and from the sponsorships, we use it for the infrastructure for all of you to be able to uh, produce work together. So the main investment goes in the platform, that's for sure. 
and the maintenance of the tools like the run boat and everything. But uh, then there is a major part of our cost. So the budget is all open. You will have in the AGA, so you have all the financial results. So the, the, the current expense we have is also our, our own internal costs to, to actually run this association. And there is not much left. So in the part that is left, we have this event, <laughs> among others, that we spend a fair share of the budget on it. And the remaining part, we, we, we provide some RFQ for it's through this open upgrade project. It's the only project among all the repo we have that we are currently uh, funding in this way. Uh, the reason for this is that it's the only tool that allows to have an open migration through Odoo version. And we think this is very closely linked to the mission of the OCA uh, as an order of magnitude that any other work we do has. So that's why we choose this one. But I mean, it's a decision we took, uh, I would say, in, among the board. It seems to be supported by everyone uh, until then, since many years, and we continue to carry it on. I don't know if you have other opinion. Seems okay. Yeah. You want to well, react? Yeah, just uh, just one important point. Um, an event like this not only involves a lot of work from from all, but but a huge chunk of the money that we that we got from membership just to get to get you an idea it's about i don't have the exact figures right now but uh, an event running an event like this costs more than 30,000 euro in a whole and so we have to we have to make it all work and it wouldn't be working at all if we hadn't uh, a lot of people were contributing their time and also you guys you're coming from all over the world attending the meeting contributing to the event sharing ideas and this is this is uh, this is something that we would like to uh, contain and i think uh, as as soon as we as soon as we achieve to to be able to run such events on a continuous basis then we can think of further things to do maybe one last question yeah I wanted to, to thank the organizations and I uh, wanted to know if uh, there is some retrospective and uh, uh, some plan to get uh, to earn from this uh, event and to, 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 to create the, the next one. And uh, I don't know if uh, as a member of the association how we can help more to, to organize uh, the event. All right, so um, for, for the survey, we, after every event we did, we usually run a survey, so every one of you can feedback us about what has been great, what has been a little bit less great, and we try always to improve. Uh, trying is not succeeding, but I think it shows some goodwill. <laughs> um, <laughs> as part of helping, I don't know if uh, some of the event part will answer to that one. Yeah, I think usually we have some calls for help, so we gladly take some help to pack it up everything afterwards. Uh, in the organizing of the event itself, I mean, it was mostly run by some people among the board, that is true. Uh, and, I mean, Rebecca has definitely uh, coordinated everything uh, in this case for, for making this real. Yeah, also, yeah, thanks. And I think uh, Axon deserves also some applause it's because they found the place, especially Laurent, uh, which invested personal time in finding the place, the food, the sofa and everything. Honestly, he made uh, the music band. So standing ovation, please, for Laurent. Thank you very much for this. We owe you something here. Uh, I think we're getting close to the end of it. Um, uh, to let you know that among the board, we're also questioning how we will be tomorrow, and we are discussing uh, some ideas about this. We understand we, we lack some funding to pursue the, the contribution of the time once we contributed after for a customer project to carry it on, the lack of steering. And I think we, we need to find a way to, to make some incentive for the company to invest on this. So we have a couple of ideas, but as it's not disclosed yet, I, I will release them uh, in a later stage. But definitely this is our, our main working point from now on, is to, to find a way to, to, to make insensitive for the company to, to fund the OCA in return of something. And, and that's what we will work uh, around for, for, for the following year, I guess. 
I'm, I'm talking about all integrators company, not Odoo. Huh? There is no way you're going to get money from them. No, Odoo will not fund the OCI, I guess, but we never know, you know. <laughs> it goes a bit against the independent uh, keywords that all of you choose among the, the five we have. Huh? Uh, yes? Pero? Uh, talking about Odoo, is a plan to talk uh, with Fabian, uh, the recent the yearly talk with him, OCA, Odu, or um, that even has been cancelled? Uh, to be honest, this is a bit my fault. <laughs> so every year I uh, was in Belgium, I organized the talk uh, for an hour or so with the board and, uh, and Fabian. And since we had this remote uh, session, the two previous years, uh, it has turned out that Fabian gets in an MA session inside our own conferences. I found it very great. And uh, honestly, I think this year I, I completely forgot <laughs> to call him to set this up, so it's probably my guilt. Uh, so maybe I can catch him up uh, during the, the days. If I can, I, I will. Uh, but I have not planned it in advance this year, unfortunately, to be honest. Yep, I think we reached the end of the, of the time we had. Uh, I want to thank you all for your joining and your investment during those days. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in the name of the board, uh, we definitely thank you all. We cannot have this great event without your participation. So it is us that applause you now. <laughs>